Hello there, that was a really good slide. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, I made a video saying I was done talking about USB-C stuff. I lied. <laughs> now, there have been quite a few requests for me to go back and review and comment over my, my winning, my finals round uh, USB-C routine. I think a lot of this is coming from the fact that James Hoffman did a review of his 2007 WBC routine, which is World Barista Championship, by the way, not US Barista Championship. I think that's where a lot of it's coming from, and there seems to be a high enough demand that I think we shall do that today. Now, I have not watched that routine back at all in the months since it happened. As much as I'm on camera very frequently and, and pretty comfortable with it, I don't love <laughs> going back and watching myself on camera, so I have avoided it, but I think there are a lot of interesting things we could talk about notice if we go back and look at it together. That being said, that is what we are going to do today. It should be very fun. Also, by the way, a lot of you have been asking when the James Hoffman collaboration is coming and more on that soon, perhaps? Very exciting. So I'm gonna now brew myself a cup of coffee to enjoy alongside this, this rewatch and commentary. And I also wanna give a huge thank you to our sponsor. So I will see you back here very soon. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessis for a while and they've fast become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday. You've seen me wear their weekend model all the time due to its low profile and comfortable fit, but they also just released the Everyday Move slip-ons, which have a sportier look with the same comfort and enhanced breathability of all their other shoes. However, we have to talk about my favorite part of these shoes since I'm both a barista and live in the rainy state of Oregon, and that is that these Vessis are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dymatex knit material, meaning that when mistakes, spills, or more often than not puddles happen, my feet stay dry. This makes them both the perfect shoe behind the bar and the perfect everyday rainy weather shoe, and their herringbone tread pattern keeps them grippy and safe even when I'm slippy around the cafe. So if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself, I gotcha, because Vessi is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MORGAN. That's the link in the description and code MORGAN. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. What color is this cup? I will admit this is a blue-gray cup. It doesn't make it blue. <laughs> it's more blue than it is gray. Anyways, it's not news to anyone that I that I have problems with my with my blue-green colors. In case anyone is curious, I am making a, a natural process gesha uh, from Mexico right now. Just you know, a little something to sip on. It's blue. Right. If anyone is curious right now, I am using an origami dripper with a conical filter. So I don't know if anyone's curious about that. I thought I would just tell you anyways. <laughs> For a really long time, I was super stuck on the W60, which is kind of a riff on the V60. Really nice brewer. I really enjoyed it, but I, I recently got an origami and I've been really enjoying this as well. I think aesthetically, this is probably my favorite brewer that's on the market, like at all. And I will admit that is a component of, <laughs> of why I use it so much. Okay. Welcome back everyone. Um, I have a lovely cup of coffee. I have everything all geared up here and uh, I hope you also have a nice cup of coffee because this is, this is gonna take a minute. So it's settled in and then we will get started. I'm actually kind of nervous. It feels like right now, I didn't expect the amount of nerves, but watching this back almost feels like I'm about to do it again for the first time. Here we go. You might notice that I, I seem to look a little bit stressed up there when I'm standing on stage, and that's because um, there were ice cubes that I needed to use to shake my drink, and they were sitting just out in a container that I was gonna use to transfer them into my shaker. And they had been sitting in that container for about 15 minutes, um, maybe not 15, maybe about 10 minutes, because I just had to wait for my judges to be ready. So I was standing there stressing, knowing that my ice cubes were melting. So that's why I look a little bit, <laughs> a little bit sweaty there. Now my judges are approaching me from a good, like, you know, 20, 30 feet away, so I'm, <laughs> Standing there, just staring at them as they approach. They're about to about to pop on screen. There they go. All the judges were so 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 lovely all through the weekend, but especially the final round was just was just a wonderful time. You'll hear me say kind of the same things over and over again. I'm like, hello, welcome, hello, <laughs> thank you for being here, hello, welcome. And then they get all seated, and then it's time to start. All right, awesome. Everyone feeling nice and comfortable? Perfect. Um, I'll take my music now. Thank you. So I started my music before I called time. So when the music starts, that's not when your time starts. Your time only starts when you raise your hand and call time.
You'll notice in this, I said, it's been a long day. We're just gonna take a second to breathe. That, of course, because I hadn't called time yet, wasn't wasn't factored into anything in my score sheet. But I did that because I was actually the very last competitor of the day. All the judges had already seen the other five competitors. I believe it was around like two or like almost three o'clock at this point. And for the final round, each competitor has the exact same panel of judges. So these judges had been tasting coffee and like been, they'd been on the entire day. As a competitor, I had been like on the entire day preparing. So no matter how good you are, either as a competitor or a judge, like you are, you're tired. You're like worn out by this time of the day. So I was just kind of standing there and I was like, everyone, we're gonna take like 20 seconds. We're just gonna breathe. We're gonna take a breath. We're gonna get through this last round and then we're just gonna see what happens. So that's why I said what I did. Time. Hello judges. My name is Morgan and I'm so excited to be here today. I was so excited to be there. I was also very tired and really excited to finish up this final round though. My attitude here was kind of like, just leave it all on the floor. I was like ready to pour like my entire heart in this final routine. Um, I think it was like close to crying at a couple points, not out of like stress or anything, but just like out of the fact that this was the final round. Now I'm grinding my coffee. I'm grinding all of it beforehand. And if you remember, I'm using two different types of coffees. Uh, the Sudan Rame, which was for espresso and my signature beverage. And then the Eugenoides, which was for um, my milk course. And now these two coffees were extremely different. Um, they needed different doses, the very different extraction. Um, but you'll actually notice I'm grinding the Sudan Rame first. I'm doing four doses of that. And then after that, I have the eugenoides, and you'll see me actually adjust the grind size on stage. Let's see. I think we're really close to it here. Let's see. Yep, that's me adjusting the grind size right there. That was really, really, really important. If I forgot to adjust the grind size because of how drastically different these coffees are, I was basically going to be screwed for my routine. Um, and it was something I was paying a lot of attention to because there were a couple times in rehearsal back home that I had just forgotten to change the grind size or I'd like reverse the two grind sizes somehow. Um, and there's like, there's very little recovery from that. Like your espresso is, is not going to pull correctly. It's not going to taste any anything like you think it is. Um, so that, that could have been very bad, but thankfully I remembered it in all the rounds. I was also worried about dropping that tray in that walk <laughs> from the grinder uh, to the espresso station. You'll also see me pretty intentionally making a lot of eye contact with the judges. Like I will like step out from behind machinery to look at them. And that's because on your score sheets, there is a component of like basically barista hospitality and the experience from the barista. So they are looking for things like eye contact. So that's why I was being pretty intentional about that. I wanted to make sure they were having a nice time, point, you know? A gateway that links passion to technical mastery. Oh, now a couple people had questions in the comments day of about the people who are behind me. So if you'll notice, I have the, the sensory judges who are sitting down at the table, but then the two people behind me are actually technical judges. They are looking at things like my workflow, my cleanliness, my use of like the bar space, like all sorts of stuff. And they have their own grading sheets that they're giving me scores on. So they kind of like have to get really close the entire time. They have to be paying attention to super minute stuff, like how level my tamping is, like all sorts of stuff. So a lot of people were like, why are they hovering? Why are they getting so so close and it's, it's because they're doing their job they know where they're supposed to be uh, and I also knew that they were there and I'm really comfortable with tech judges being around me and does not follow the rules of now on stage here a couple people asked about this I'm actually using what's called a force tamp it's uh, actually what I have back here so this is essentially like a spring-loaded tamp that that sits it latches kind of on top of the portafilter basket and then you press down and it like releases a, a very similar amount of pressure each time it also ensures that you are tamping pretty lovely. Um, this is mostly just for consistency and also for scoring because again those tech judges are looking for like a level bed each time. But you don't have to use that. You can use a traditional tamp. You're also allowed to have like electrical components on stage with you. So some people will actually bring like puck presses on stage with them just to really ensure consistency and that's totally allowed as well. So because of this I am up dosing in these 18 gram baskets with 20 grams in. We are getting 35 grams out at approximately 22. Now I'm doing my milk course first. I was using these Vero Cortado glasses that like, it was a really, really tight fit underneath the spouts of the portafilter. So I had to like, <laughs> I had to like jump the glasses underneath the portafilter in order to make sure uh, that the droplets, uh, that those first few drops of espresso, cause it was a pretty fast extraction, um, weren't falling into the grate or anything like that. 
I also used this carafe, like this little jug to hold my milk from Ikea. And it has like a really narrow spout that was not conducive <laughs> to the milk pouring out quickly. So in the future, I don't think I'm gonna use that. This was a, a pretty inconvenient tool, but we did not have time to find a new one. Stopping the espresso and then it's time to steam. I'm using a freeze distilled milk here, super, super thick, super, super heavy. Um, it didn't need a ton of air. So I just, I just kind of blasted it on the front end, then spent a lot of time integrating all that air uh, throughout what was essentially like a heavy cream consistency. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. So I'm looking on stage here, um, over on the side, uh, the person with the camera, that's Nikki, who does all the social media for Onyx. She's fantastic. She got like all the photos that I've pretty much posted online, I think from competition were done by Nikki. So good. She got so close with the camera. It was awesome. And now comes the really stressful part where you have to <laughs> you have to go over to the judges table you have to talk to them you have to look at them you have to tell them uh tasting notes and you also have to pour things at the exact same time in previous years competing, I'd done my milk course as like my second course. So by the time we got to the second course, I'd kind of knocked off some of those nerves, but this year I was doing my milk course first. So I was still like kind of, like the adrenaline of competing was still very much like fresh in me. So that was kind of nerve wracking because my my hands shake a good deal, especially when I'm pouring. So I was pretty nervous about pouring these drinks first thing during my routine, but I was doing really simple designs. Like you, you're graded on your latte art in terms of like symmetry and like glossiness and like all sorts of stuff like that, but you aren't really graded on complexity. So that you, there's no like real advantage of pouring a swan <laughs> on stage during competition than there is pouring like a really simple, like three tiered tulip. So that's what I did. It was kind of like a one little base, a larger base set into that and then a little heart on top and very simple, very cute. Um, and as long as they were symmetrical, you're gonna score well. And I was also using um, some milk sharing techniques um, because I steamed my milk for all four of those drinks in one go, in one go. So I used a 32 ounce pitcher and then I was really heavily like moving the milk back and forth um, so that when I was pouring those drinks and the milk was just sitting there, um, I could then kind of like counterbalance that by keeping it moving and keeping that air moving through everything. That took a lot of practice, honestly. It is, it is hard to pour four drinks in a row with the same batch of milk and have them all look really nice. Usually during those last two, you start to see a lot of like, a lot of like imperfections in the milk by that point, but you can mitigate that. Espresso are a combination that meets people where they are, yet it acts as a catalyst to carry them so much further. It's where many of us started our journeys in coffee. Today. <laughs> Here I am just, just chatting, started. just staring at my milk. <laughs> my only drinking instruction to you is that after you finish, Please take several sips of water in preparation for our next course. And as I hand off this final... This is such a low table. I mean, I'm a, I'm a pretty short person. I'm like 5'3". But it is like, it is a low table. So when you're like grabbing stuff, you're kind of just like bending down <laughs> in front of the judges. And there's the last drink. Thank you. To Barnaby it goes, and then the judges get a drink. And then everyone like cheers for you in between all your courses. It's very sweet. <laughs> very exciting. Now, next up, we have the espresso round. There were some, <laughs> there was a, a pretty big problem that actually happened in the espresso round uh, during this, this final round. That was, that was pretty scary. So let me, I'll explain that once we get a little bit closer. Now the busters coming through and grabbing all those dishes. I, um, all the competitors give their busters really detailed instructions. So I, I told uh, my busser exactly when they should pick up the milk course, um, exactly when they should take the dishes away from the espresso course, all that stuff. You have a lot of control about what goes on on stage, but at the same time, like if you forget to tell your busser something um, and they don't take something away, uh, that is on you. You will get docked points for not communicating like effectively and having the station cleared. On here, you'll notice, and I do this with all the things, you slot in both of your portafilters at the same time and you start the shots at the same time. And that is, you get points for doing that and you get points if you don't do that. So we're using Black Eagle machines here. That was the sponsor this year for the espresso machine. The buttons for starting the extraction are kind of these like big, like jelly looking buttons and they require a good amount of pressure to activate them. So I had slotted my portafilters in, I had pressed them. And then since it was espresso, I, I stepped back a tiny bit to then go talk back to my judges, assuming that both of my shots were pulling. And then I actually ended up looking back. I realized that one of my shots had not dropped yet. And I realized that I had not pressed the button hard enough to start that shot. So thankfully it was in with like three or four seconds where I was able to just jump back. I started the shot and then I just stopped them at different times based on you know, like 
So they had an even extraction, even though they started at different times. But that was like a terrifying moment. Cause I was like, for a second, my brain's like, is the group head not working? Like, did I use the wrong grind size for one of these? Did I like accidentally switch coffees? Like all that stuff. And thankfully the answer was super simple. I just had to press the button, but like truly terrifying moment. It now stands on its own to be deconstructed. All right, so I just started it. You'll see me walk away. Espresso's complexities that there is camaraderie because novice and expert come together. Oh, actually I haven't started. Okay, so I'm slotting them in right now. I start them, move the cups under, and then I walk away and then hang on. Right there, that's the, <laughs> and you'll see me press it again. <laughs> a thousand panicked thoughts ran through my head in that second. So it's a lot of mental gymnastics on stage for sure. Now, in our own pursuit for new flavors, we come to this espresso course with a fresh coffee. This time... And then there we go. So I had to stop them at different times. Both of the shots pulled in like 22 seconds. They pulled out to the same way and all of this stuff. But that happened at different times. So I did lose points on my technical score sheets because of this whoopsie here. But sometimes stuff like that just happens and you can't control it. This coffee is a natural process with an anaerobic fermentation. Once now it's a I race uh, to bring over the espressos and set them in, in front of the judges before the, the crema like breaks or dissipates in any way um, because there's a crema evaluation. They want to make sure your crema is solid. Um, there are no breaks in it um, and you lose a point if there's a break in your crema. So I instructed them not to drink yet. I wanted that espresso to cool as much as possible. In fact, um, the cups and the spoons they were using were chilled beforehand. Um, but since the longer you let an espresso sit, the more the crema tends to dissipate. Um, I was like instructing them very specifically, please look at the espresso, mark down that the crema is intact and then just like sit and wait for it to cool. Now your tactile is going to be a medium weight. It has a round and slick mouthfeel and has a long lasting finish of floral. I feel so bad for the judges. Like they have to, they have to take in so much information. Like I am, I spit like six or seven tasting notes at them plus like six or seven like tactile calls at them. And they just have to like memorize that. Like as a competitor, I'm trying to be as considerate and thoughtful as possible with how fast I'm telling them things, but I'm on a time limit. Like I've only got 15 minutes to do this thing. So I'm kind of going as considerately quickly as I can, and they just have to like deal with it. So it's a huge props to the judges. The cups in front of you have been I'm also like running around in front of them doing things too. Like it's very visually distracting as well. So it takes a, it takes a ton of skill to be a judge. And then judges, you may now enjoy. There's the cheering for the espresso course. Specifically what the tech judges are looking for when they're jumping over my shoulder there um, is that the portafilter basket is completely clean. So you'll see me using a rag over like all surfaces of it. Um, that's to make sure there aren't any like, you know, small particles or grains of coffee in it. And you get points off if there is coffee in it. And then once more, once the judges finish their espresso course and tasting it, uh, the busser comes through and they pull everything away. Judges, we cannot continue to move forward as an industry if we aren't willing to look past the this really felt at this point in the routine like i think this is about probably close to 10 minutes into the routine um leading into the signature drink this last signature drink portion really felt like the final sprint like i could see i could just see the finish line in sight and i was like i was like go out with a bang like just pour your emotion into it um and i think i, I think i did that i definitely left the stage being like you almost cried four times so i think you did a good job <laughs> Because meeting people where they are has always been the foundation of hospitality. And while the locales, yes, have shifted from what we've known... Man, I had so much to say. This was like a pretty verbose speech for the most part. There were intentional points where I stopped talking. Like you'll notice right after I serve courses, I don't talk for about 30 to 45 seconds. That's very intentional because the judges need that time to taste and to evaluate without like the distraction of me just blabbing. But that being said, like I, I, I spoke a lot and this was a very, very wordy speech, which for anyone who knows me, that's not surprising. <laughs> I do like to talk. Something that people at home could make and enjoy in the comfort Now, I also did a pass through here um, and gave them all more water. That factors into kind of your hospitality, like barista experience sort of section. Um, and it's just nice. Like if you were in a cafe, you would want to give your guests water. If you were a server, if you're any of those things, you would refill someone's water. So it's kind of expected of you on stage as well. Mimicking those characteristics, it is optimized. 
with the Sudan remake. Super easy to forget, though. Like, if they don't drink any of their water, you don't need to do it. Uh, but if they do drink their water, you need to do it. So it's one of those things, like, I just had to keep an eye um, to see where their water levels were at. Sudan Ramey espresso. Cold in the same recipe. And then here comes the construction of my signature drink. Begin our transformation. Which you all are hopefully pretty familiar with at this point. <laughs> It's a big, delicious citrus bomb and tasty and wonderful and icy and so good. I was I was really, really happy with this drink. We'll probably keep something kind of similar to it for worlds. Ingredients and like reasoning might change a little bit, but like the, the core, like the build of it is probably going to look pretty similar. And then filter after eight hours. 30 grams of orange blossom water in combination with the espresso's florality creates a steady note of rose water. We have one egg white for texture. Ooh, the egg white was kind of scary. So you'll notice this if you go back and watch my round one from this competition season. I used an egg white that was significantly larger than I was used to. The egg white is what causes kind of like the texture and the foaminess of this drink. Pretty common technique in cocktails. But since I was using a larger egg white than I was used to, it frothed up so much more than I was expecting. So I popped the lid off my shaker after shaking it and the drink was about to like pour down the side. Like you'll notice I was like using a rag to really frame frantically like clean the edges of the shaker. It was, it was very nerve wracking that first day. And so for the rest of these days, I actually cut the weight of my egg white almost in half. So you could still get, you know, a lot of that really nice mouth feel and like frothiness that it caused, but it wouldn't put me at risk of like overflowing the shaker on stage because that happened the first day and that was terrible. And then finally, half a gram of saline solution in order to bring this mixture together harmoniously. I'm gonna step aside for one moment in order to blend and then shake with ice to chill. I'm also using like a, a pretty weird shaker. Like my, the shaker I was using is very unconventional. A um, couple of people had questions about that. <laughs> The answer is I am not good with a cocktail shaker. Like I used multiple different kinds. Um, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really bad at especially like the interlocking ones where you have two different like vessels that you slam together. They're very, very common. Um, I'm forgetting the technical name of them right now, but I would like lock them together. I would shake and I would be completely unable to unlock them. Like it would just be me like gripping it, like smacking the sides, trying to get the thing to give. I don't know if that is something just to do with like, I have weak hands, <laughs> which is fun or just something I needed more practice with. But because of how short the time period for prep was, I just wasn't comfortable using one of those shaker so I found this like 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 a baby shaker <laughs> it's this little one that has a little sealable um, strainer on the top and then the top like covering component I guess also just kind of locks on so there's no like smacking it to get it to release it's just kind of like a twist off top so it is a baby shaker it's very silly like it's not the best shaker in the world but it, it worked for what I needed it to do so I'm adding the ice right now thankfully it didn't melt completely but yeah you can see me putting on the little strainer and it's just a little twist top and my, my technique for shaking is probably pretty bad like I am <laughs> I'm aware. I'm a. I'm getting better at. For, I'm getting better at it for worlds. Don't worry. I posted uh, the construction of my signature beverage on TikTok, and one of my <laughs> one of my awesome mutuals on there who does a lot of like cocktail and bar work. He was like, "We have to get you a normal shaker," and I was like, "I know. I know. Will you teach me, please? You're not allowed to make fun of my cocktail shaking." But thankfully, in this round, I didn't have any explosions. My egg white behaved essentially how it was supposed to. We were in the clear there which is a lemon lime flavor. Ooh, you'll also notice a lot of people picked this up, which I thought was really cool. One of my tasting notes for this signature beverage was yuzu, um, which is a, a citrus. Really, really delicious, but it's it's kind of like, sounds so weird to say, the flavor of it is kind of like the combination of all citrus fruits. It's really complex and delicious. But the very first round, I didn't describe yuzu at all. I just said yuzu is one of the tasting notes and moved on past it. But something that we thought about after, you know, me and my coaches thought about after that first round was the fact that not all the judges might be familiar with the flavor of yuzu like it is it's a common citrus but it's like it's not that common you know it's nothing like a lemon so i said the flavor is yuzu and i said it's a lemon lime flavor with a strong influence of orange and that was just to give the judges more context as to what the flavor was supposed to be so if they weren't super comfortable with it that was just to help them you know taste it in the drink but a lot of people noticed that i said that in one round versus the other oh that was really cool Gelato, as well as a steady rose water throughout each sip your tactile is going to be a medium to heavy weight. The mouthfeel is slick. All this information I'm giving right now, the tactile and the flavor, this was all like 
the last of the super, super important stuff. Like if I forgot the rest of my routine after I, I described the drink, that was fine. The rest of the routine wasn't gonna give me any points, but I just need to make sure I got out those final tactile and uh, taste calls. Coffee, as we have known it, has remained large. And then what I'm doing for the rest of the routine is like frantically cleaning my station because I all pretty much a lot of the technical scores come from like the cleanliness of your station. Um, and so I was running around making sure there was nothing that I missed. I also had on stage with me a little timer. It was my own timer that I'd started. So I was checking that to see how much time I had left um, to clean. And so is this experience. So it is here. The last day of this Aww. and then I did pause. I wanted to give the last kind of portion of my talk in front of the judges, so I stopped cleaning and here was the end. Swirl, take in the aroma and then sip at your leisure. Judges, it has been an absolute honor serving you. Oh, the last line. I didn't call time here. So I looked at my little timer that I had out of the corner of my eye. I think I was probably at around 14 minutes and I think around 20 seconds when I told the judges to drink and I was done talking to them. That's awesome because I had 15 minutes in total. So that leaves me like a whole 40 seconds of just cleaning time, which is a, it is a lot. It doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a ton of time in the context of your entire presentation. So I felt very comfortable on stage. I knew I had plenty of time to do everything and I wanted to make use of that time. I didn't want to like end early. You don't get points for ending early. You only lose points if you end late. So I was like, great, I did everything. Now I'm gonna make sure my station is pristine. And this is a little bit dangerous because you you can lose track of time. Like I, I have seen this happen in various levels of competition before. A competitor will finish their um, presentation essentially. And then they'll look at the clock, see that they have some extra time to clean and then they'll start cleaning, but then they'll lose track of that time. And so even though they were at one point not in risk of going over because they went to go clean and stopped looking at their timer, they then did go over. So that was something I was pretty conscious of as well. That's like heartbreaking. If you could have ended on time and not lost points, but then accidentally went over, like that sucks. But thankfully I had my little timer with me and 40 seconds again was, was more than enough. And you'll actually see this person behind me. She is the head judge of the panel. So she didn't taste anything. She wasn't necessarily marking me off points or anything like that, but she is there to kind of collect all the information that I give over the course of the presentation without the distraction of having to taste anything. So then when all the judges go back to deliberate backstage, they have someone who has been solely focused on paying attention to the, the overarching components of the routine. So then if there's some question from the sensory judges of like, I think Morgan said yuzu, but I don't totally remember. I didn't get a chance to write it down. The head judge is then able to very clearly look down the list and go, yes, Morgan said yuzu at this time. That was the flavor you're looking for. So that's what they're there for mostly. In previous years, the head judge would have gone through and tasted all the drinks that the sensory judges had, which sounds a little bit disgusting <laughs> just drinking out of everyone's glasses but that is the curse of coffee competitions however this year with the pandemic you can't really like sacrifice someone just for the sake of looking for consistency so the head judge was really there just to like aggregate all the information that i was giving rather than looking for consistency as well just some of the the necessary changes that had to be made okay and then i called time now okay <laughs> <laughs> Here's the very, the very silly thing that I did um, that it didn't get me in trouble, but it was kind of funny. So you'll notice that I walk off stage with one of my trays and I did this very intentionally. I was supposed to do it on all my other rounds, but I didn't. So that's why it looked a little bit weird this time. But our theory was behind stage, um, me and my coaches, was that if I took something off stage, the judges wouldn't be able to grade it or look at it. So on that tray there, that's the tray where there was like the most, you know, chance for mess. Like that's where my distributor was, which had coffee grounds on the bottom. That's where my tamp was. That was where my dirty rag was. Like that could have cost me some points. So I was like, well, I'll just like walk off stage with it. And then we don't even have to worry about it. However, it is kind of like a weird gray area. And so I wasn't in trouble by walking off stage with it, but the judges decided they did want to look at what I had taken. So you'll see my lovely, lovely, uh, one of my tech judges had to come back and like grab the, <laughs> grab the tray away from me and was like, no, we, we, we do need to look at this. So some people were like, oh my gosh, did, did Morgan do something wrong? I didn't do something wrong, but I did something that was like morally gray. And everyone was like, we're gonna look at it. You're not in trouble, but we do wanna look at it. I was like, okay, fine, totally fine. This is actually a kind of a similar thing to like, actually James did something kind of similar. So, and again, rules have changed a lot in barista competitions, but like in previous years, there was a rule in place where if something wasn't on the, the counter surface of the competition area, it wouldn't be graded on. So James mentioned this in his video, but what he did is he himself had his own kind of like dirty
dirty tray. And at the end of his routine, he just lifted it off and set it on the shelving underneath the countertop. And that got rid of it. In the eyes of the judges, they could not look at it. Now, <laughs> the rule was changed after he did that because the judges decided that is like an easy out. Like we can't have competitors doing that. And so this is another one of those similar gray areas where I did this, but because I walked off stage with this, there might honestly be a rule in the future that says competitors can't take their like service wares off stage with them. So I'm sorry to any future competitors if I have caused this rule change, but that's how rules work. You, you don't know you need to make them until you realize it. Hi, hello. <laughs> Man, I was so like giddy after this. I was, <laughs> I was just giggling and blabbing and run on sentences galore for this. I'm pretty sure the judges behind me were discussing how they were gonna get that tray out of my hands and also why I took the tray with me. <laughs> But yeah, I felt I felt really good about this routine. Oh, no. um, <laughs> this is so funny. Oh, um, this is like the best interview afterwards. This is amazing. This is and that's hello, me hello, screaming hello. essentially into my lav mic. Um, oh my god! But it was a really good time. Here, let me get to the point where that <laughs> where Kane has to come take the take the tray away from me. That's Kane waiting to take my tray away. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, we pretty recently had a, a judging debrief um, where I was actually able to talk to my entire panel of judges with my score sheets and like discuss uh, what went, what went right and what went wrong and like any questions I had. And Kane at the end of the debrief was like, do you want to talk about the tray? And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to talk about the tray. What happened? Uh, and that's when I learned that it was like this weird gray area that I had somehow stepped into. <laughs> so funny. I didn't realize that that's where the live stream like cut off of me. <laughs> me handing the tray to Kane. That's hilarious. But anyways, that was my final USB-C routine. That was quite a joy to rewatch. I will admit it was a little bit hard at times to, to talk over listening to myself speaking, but I hope this gave you some fun, interesting insight into the, the weirdness that happened on stage because there were definitely weird things that happened that I didn't plan for in practice. And yeah, hopefully this satisfies all of your curiosities. And I, I do promise that now I'm done with USB-C. We've got a month or so until I'll really be diving into WBC stuff, but hopefully, hopefully this is the final chapter. Hopefully I'm not lying again this time. Anyways, this was a lovely time. I hope you all had a good time and I will see you very soon. Again, I am Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere you can find me. Uh, you'll find me here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Uh, you'll find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every single day. I'm gonna go finish my now very cold coffee elsewhere and I'll see you very soon. Have a great day, everyone.